Hello, everyone. Welcome to the new tips and tricks sessions for VMA Cloud on AWS. Today, we're going to be talking about an amazing tool, we realize Log Inside Cloud. The title of this session today is Gaining Instant Valuable Insights into Your VMA Cloud on AWS Deployment with we realize Log Inside Cloud. I'm Christophe Lombard. I'm a Cloud Customer Success Architect. I'm working on the Cloud Customer Success team uh, as an expert on VMC on AWS. Uh, and uh, I will uh, let Pedro Luis, my colleague, uh, introduce himself and we'll start in a, in a few seconds. Where is Pedro? Hey, Christoph. I'm here. I'm Hello. here. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for Hello. you. <laughs> Hello, Chris. How are you? Yeah, fine. Thank you. Hi, all. Um, as you know, I'm Pedro Luis Alfonso. I'm, I'm from Spain, based in Madrid. I have nearly 22 years uh, of background in IT, and now as Christoph, I'm Cloud Customer Success Architect at EMEA, and I'm here with you to share the next 30 to 45 minutes. And this will be great, okay? So let's go with a quick pool of questions in order to know how is our audience today. So. Uh, we encourage you to, to answer it, please. So what cloud solution are you using today? And you have these four options. Please select all that apply. Yeah, we always uh, love to ask, uh, you know, questions to our customers. So, and yeah. we, we are really looking forward to know what, uh, what solutions is the, the one you are leveraging today. There are no good or bad answer, by the way. So <laughs> yeah, that's true. This is this is not an exam, okay? Just so to please <laughs> yeah, be to fair and then what solutions you you leverage today. Okay. Because any anyway, we realize log inside cloud is 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 working with with all of the cloud provider today. So most of most of them. So so, so we give us. Uh, to five minutes. seconds more, yeah. and we can go ahead with the with the result. Okay. So I th think Let's we don't see. have too much. I think we oh, have other. Yeah. Oh, okay. Other. <laughs> Most of them are not using uh, <laughs> the, the main one, which is quite okay. Uh, new okay, for us. Okay. But anyway, no problem. <laughs> okay, we ask at the end what order. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, so let's go to the next one. So the, the next one we, we are we want to know if what solutions you are using today to centrally, centrally manage your logs and events. So you, there are a couple of solutions on the market at the moment. Some are very well known like Splunk. You, you may also leverage some um, uh, other solutions like Syslog or, or other more, uh, I would say, uh, open source solutions. Really depends. Uh, we we also uh, want to hear from you what what solution is uh, is is the one that you that you prefer. Yeah. Please answer more. <laughs> <laughs> we need minimum of two or three in order to discuss at the end, please. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. I know which, which um, answer I will choose, but I will not tell it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So it looks like we don't have uh, too much question answer. So let's, let's go see. over the next one. Okay. But the How do so, you consider the prof? Ah, yeah, there is the question three. Sorry, they jump in my screen. How so do you consider you the process of log management with your tool? Okay, very easy, easy, complex, or a nightmare? Yeah, that's sometimes it's a nightmare. So, <laughs> to be honest, because there are so many components, or it could be hardware, it could be software, it could be virtualized, it could be on the cloud, it could be on premises. You never know where it comes from, and you have to to find a way to uh, like uh, consolidate all of those um, data and stuff in one place and make the, mm -hmm. the right uh, decision based on the analysis you may 
you may uh, you may have done okay. on those data. Um, I don't know if we have answered or not. If we can go ahead with the result, of, we jump. Yeah, maybe to the last maybe question. we can continue because it okay. seems that. Um, and this is the last one. No more question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is our biggest challenge in log management? So. Um, we have oh, we got, we, got, we got an answer for the question. Okay, okay, Sorry, okay, just okay. To so <laughs> some of them are finding it easy, is easy and some of them, I, I would say 50% uh, nightmare. So <laughs> okay. most of the time it's it's complex. Yeah. So now that is complex, that we identify it is complex, what is the biggest challenge in this log management? Would it be collecting and index, indexing the data? Would it be aligning and exploring the logs? Would it be visualizing the logs and getting value out of it? Or would it be integrating with the monitoring ecosystem? Okay. Let's go ahead with the question. Um, Let's wait for a few yeah. seconds for the answer. Okay. To jump. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and most of the time with vRealize Log Inside Cloud, we try to address all of those challenges. Mm -hmm. Most of them are, uh, uh, you know, well uh, spread in uh, in the log management um, solutions, and uh, we try to address them. Uh, no, the in, pop up. Yeah. There is a, a there is a, the yeah, someone saying it's not popping yeah. up. Oh, yeah. Here it is. Sorry for the delay. It's, it's some... Yeah, it seems we are experiencing a yeah. bit of a delay there, no problem. So now that you can see the questions, go ahead yeah. and select the one that you think is your biggest challenge. I would say getting value out of it, sometimes it's complex. And, yeah. um, addressing okay. some security and compliance yeah uh, analyzing Analyze and exploring, and exploring. The it's 100 percent of the okay answer interesting okay. very interesting so we go ahead i make a short review of our agenda today um uh, one question at the end we have a q a section so we want to make this session as as interacted as much as possible. So please don't hesitate to share your doubts, concerns, and questions at the end. And we encourage you to participate with us. And it would be a pleasure for Chris and me to try to address and answer all of them at the end. By the way, I'll keep an eye on the chat and handle it properly if it needed. So thanks and enjoy. The floor is yours. Chris, go ahead. Thank you, Pedro. So let's start by an introduction. So Log Insight is this this solution is let's say a very powerful machine learning system to that that's going to be grouping similar events together and give you a true visibility from the on premises as well as the VMC on AWS cloud SDDC deployment as well as the native public cloud. So we are now supporting uh, most of the um, major cloud provider like uh, AWS, but not only AWS, as well as Azure and GCP. So this will help quickly understand the health of each of the SDDC by um, making uh, identification of anomalies across the infrastructure and the applications better and easier. These grouping capabilities not only will help us identify the issue in the environment, but it can also assist with cross-cloud co events correlation. So that's really the... Um, the, uh, the interest of the solutions, you can view the event in context over the entire environment. So, so that we can even see the event trends in the Log Explorer. We are gonna be talking about the Log Explorer just after uh, a couple of slides. So we support a broad range of applications. We support not only um, physical uh, environment like Dell servers or Cisco um, routers uh, through, so, so, through the, um, the utilization of content packs. We also support uh, the major operating system from Microsoft and Linux. We support the middleware with like Apache and uh, MySQL, and we support as well Kubernetes and OpenStack. So there are a broad range of applications that we support through the, so the, the, the usage of the content packs. 
Uh, obviously, as I said, we support the cloud, uh, the cloud hyperscaler like uh, GCP, Azure, and AWS. For AWS, which is the one we are focusing today because we are talking about VMware Cloud on AWS, it's very easy to use. Um, we have out of the bank, out of the box content based on uh, on the those content packs that uh, we can that the customer can leverage uh, to uh, to create dashboards and alerting to visualize the information and to notify the administrator for events of interest. Uh, and we are constantly adding new log sources and content packs to support additional applications. So uh, we'll be talking about AWS uh, because we support, uh, for instance, uh, CloudWatch and CloudTrail as a source to uh, ingest into the realized log inside cloud uh, by, uh, by the implementation of a Lambda function. And uh, the third, I would say, uh, capabilities, uh, if you can go back a little bit, that is the faster SDDC troubleshooting. So really, LogInsight can assist in troubleshooting hardware issues like storage or network devices. But it can also monitor the infrastructure as a whole and the applications for, uh, for uh, you know, uh, troubleshooting purpose. And we can also, um, pro it provides as well access to multiple teams together using a role-based access control uh, model uh, for uh, support for, for various support roles that uh, may have uh, different needs and different uh, uh, access uh, access uh, requests to the to the to the logs and um, due to the intelligent alert management uh, we can help customers reduce their downtime and we can create customized alerts based on KPI and we can get notified from uh, these alerts via uh, for instance pager duty or uh, for instance slack or just sending an email so we we support uh, a lot of different ways to inform uh, through this intel intelligent alerting and we have to conclude this AI and machine learning capabilities that helps identify the critical issues across the environment through the system analytics. The system analytics basically will highlight the continuous event trends and can accelerate the root cause analysis uh, because it helps understand the structure of the events and it will co correlate all of the data automatically and will uh, help extract some smart fields, I would say, uh, that are uh, ingest during uh, during the process. So really uh, a faster SDDC troubleshooting uh, through this uh, AI and I would say artificial intelligence capabilities. Let's have a look at the, uh, a little bit the log inside cloud architecture. For uh, VMware Cloud on LWS, it's very easy. By default, there is nothing to configure. So any customer who has VMware Cloud on AWS will only uh, will get automatically access to the virtualized log inside cloud. So there is a 30 days uh, um, free uh, free access with all the features um, out of the box. Uh, you get the audit and security logs. No configuration is required. Only for the NSXT uh, firewall logs, um, which is enabled on a rule level. You will have to configure that, but once it's configured, it's going to be ingesting the, the logs into the coming from N60 to the log inside cloud. For uh, the other uh, cloud native resources, you just uh, have to set up an HTTP endpoint, HTTPS endpoint. For AWS, uh, as I said, we are leveraging a, a Lambda function to trigger uh, events. And uh, so when we've got that Lambda functions uh, enabled, uh, you can uh, start pulling log uh, from uh, from things like S3, for instance, or uh, to CloudWatch, CloudTrail, and, and so forth into the log inside cloud. So very powerful uh, way of also uh, centralizing the log. And uh, we can also pull um, log data from coming from the physical infrastructure, as we can see on the left on this schema. So the on-premises data center uh, vSphere environment can be also uh, you know, analyzed. We just need to deploy this uh, OVA uh, uh, virtual appliance uh, solutions we call the cloud proxy. This cloud proxy will communicate with the virtualized log inside cloud over an HTTPS uh, connection. So everything can be encrypted. And as well, uh, it is a compressed uh, uh, traffic flow from uh, on-premises to the cloud. 
the cloud proxy can also be leveraged to re-forward the logs from the log inside cloud to the on-prem uh, system. It could be a syslog uh, server. It could be a log inside uh, deployed on-premises you may have, but it can also be any other solutions. Um, can be a CM solutions like Splunk and the Splunk uh, system can be uh, on-premises and can be also a SaaS, uh, SaaS solutions. And uh, finally, we have the REST API integration, uh, in kind of mode of injection mode, uh, where we leverage FluentD and Fluent uh, Bit. And this is uh, allowing uh, to push logs from uh, different applications to log inside cloud. Uh, to be able to do that, you just have to generate an authorization token, and then uh, that will allow the FluentD, uh, for instance, uh, to send the logs to the to the log inside uh, uh, cloud uh, instance. So it's really providing the centralized location uh, for being able to troubleshoot uh, everything so that you can have a mix of applications that are uh, leveraging the cloud, the public cloud services, and mix that with their uh, virtual machines running on premises and be able, being able to have a centralized location to troubleshoot all of those those type of issues. Uh, so it's really, really valuable uh, and, and really also be, being able to, uh, to be alert, alerted on things that can, uh, um, that can happen on the, on the different environments. So we're going to be talking a bit uh, about the way we, we can view the, the logs. Uh, so first things that we can do from the, uh, from the console is to create, uh, I mean, to, it's to filter uh, based on the, if you have multiple SDDC, your SDDC ID, it's very easy. So you just uh, you just uh, use the, the the filtering option of uh, of the the log explorer. You just enter the SDDC ID as a text, and then you you just have to enter the the the, the real uh, unique ID of your SDDC on the right. And uh, any uh, log uh, logs coming from the SDDC are going to be displayed and filtered out on the log explorer. So the first thing is really the log explorer, where on the, you can click uh, on uh, on explore the logs. So as you can see there, we uh, we have this um, we have this uh, filtering on the SDDC ID. Uh, so um, you can customize the time range. By default, uh, it will show the latest five minutes worth of logs. So if you want to adjust uh, that. Um, time range, you can just select 30 minutes, one hour, six hour, you can customize the, the time range. Uh, you can also group um, the events over, over, uh, over a specific field so that you can have uh, a different way of uh, displaying the, the information. There are, there are multiple uh, way to filter as well. Um, so you have multiple, you have several filtering options. Uh, different way to, to view the logs messages. And uh, so you can see that you can uh, filter by event types. Uh, you can see the, um, the alert present in the, in the log messages. Um, you can, uh, each, each time you, you, you do this kind of filtering, you can also, uh, let's say, uh, save the, your query and you can come back and re reuse the same query uh, as you go uh, for the next time. Um, we can also on the right hand side see the different extracted fields, which are in blue. Uh, those fields are extracted from the logs message itself. So that's very uh, interesting because then you can filter on that uh, extracted fields. Uh, if you look at the uh, event trends, you can also, uh, and we'll talk about it just after, see the, the way, I mean, you can see the trends of the, of the events over time, which is, uh, which is very useful to see uh, if there are any issue, uh, you will see the, the event trends is, is going a, a little bit up. So it's, yes. it's a very detailed, uh, very detailed uh, explore, exploration of the logs. Yeah. You, can, you can always filter by using a, a very easy common language. You don't have to learn any yeah. complex language. Maybe you want yeah. to, to talk about that. Uh, yes, Chris. Well. Yes, Chris, this is something that we can well, and point that you don't need any special knowledge regarding um, language or syntax in the content to search. And for me, this is a super quality feature because since day zero, 
uh, you can have a quick return of index. You can Google it. Writing the words in plain text and and that you want to search. So yeah. So yeah, the log explorer is where is really where you can filter and view the the details of the log messages, and you can also create those queries for the customization of the da dashboards as well as alerts. And you can favorite them, as you can see there, save them, compare them, pin them. So there are a lot of options. Yeah. And I, I, when I'm saying you can create alerts, it's really based on the on the extraction there. You can create a specific alert for, for from, from this query. That's very powerful. Another feature to make things easier for our customers, the field inference. So we are leveraging these features, um, for instance, where is where we we can really see the the, the artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, engine uh, that's running inside the realized log inside cloud this field inference is where we are using uh, the event types you know to group some logs messages together um, this is very helpful for filtering the logs and detecting the errors in the environment environment the log message with similar learn fields are grouped together also. So that's also one of the, the way that log insight is helping, you know, to troubleshoot the, the things that's happening. Uh, the learn fields are the one in blue in this uh, screen. And um, as you can see on the left, um, it will group the similar events and it will uh, count the number of similar events so that you can see which are the most um, I mean, verbose uh, events, the, the, the most, um, like like you see there, it's it's 200 and yeah. I think it's 200 or 2000 uh, events of the same types. Mm -hmm. And uh, this can be uh, also displayed uh, in a small charts there for the learned fields. So also that you can, uh, you can understand what, what's going on. Um, I love this one. <laughs> yeah, it's, really, it's really, really interesting. It's really helpful for, for the log yeah. filtering and detecting the errors. Yeah, because uh, it's, it's learning in a continuous way from the platform and for the platform where it's used. So, um, and obviously, we have a native integration with other be realized products, for example, with, with operation. So, this enables the customer with an exponential bunch of possibilities in order to monitor and respond in a span inside the environment. And yeah. going further more, the, the, this is a simple log analysis. You can go further if you want. So for me, this, yeah. this, this, this is great. <laughs> yeah. So let's go a little bit deeper in the log exploration. We have two, two features there, the event trading that I was talking about. So it's just that um, you can trend this out. Like you can say for the last five minutes, uh, how many of the logs I've been receiving. And then you can compare the trends, for instance, with another previous 15 minutes. So you see uh, for this particular log type, uh, if you've seen more of this, and so this can be uh, a, a, a signal that this is trending uh, upwards. So that's there is something happening there. Another cool feature we have is just um, the ability to compare different logs. So we can overlay multiple queries on top of each other. So if I want to correlate, for instance, a storage issue on, a, on, on one of my ESXi hosts, I can stack the, the two queries in the same chart. So that's very really useful to compare uh, different uh, events coming uh, together. So up to four queries can be stacked like that. So it's very useful. Go ahead, Pedro. Will, let's talk about the content packs. So. We obviously we are talking about virtualized log inside cloud for VMC today, so I, I just want to focus a little bit more on that. Mm -hmm. So, and the question is, what kind of content packs do we get when we subscribe to this uh, VMC on AWS um, solution? So we have, I mean, we have seventy-seven content packs available in, in log inside cloud, but obviously not all of them would be relevant for VMC on AWS. Uh, what, what the content packs is doing is, is actually give customer expert level knowledge on the vi various logs coming from for the specific application it's covering. So it brings dashboards, it brings extracted fields, pre-built queries and alerts. So um, for instance, for VMC based on the configuration failure, for instance, 
you can enable an alert for somebody uh, whenever somebody is creating a firewall rule, for instance, or deleting a virtual machine. Uh, so this will trigger an alert. This will trigger an email or a webhook because this also supports integration through a webhook. And uh, this will uh, enabling the operation team to be to be aware of what's going on on the VMC environment. Yeah. And um, we have this extracted field all, uh, also uh, allowing the VRLI's log inside cloud to understand the structure of the log message. So uh, we can differentiate from the username, as I said, the service name from the same log message coming from VMC and AWS. And this is, will help a lot for the reporting purpose. Yeah. Uh, if we, yeah, oh, go ahead, Pedro. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, no problem. No problem. I, I want to point here that all the integration is completely native. You, without any need of setup from the customer, you only pick and choose the, the content pack and, and go ahead. And... Yeah. So wh whenever a customer, okay, can you go a little bit just before? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. No problem. Whenever a customer is purchasing the VMware Cloud on AWS subscription, he is entitled to, th to the free edition of VRLI's Log Inside Cloud. Uh, for, uh, so we'll talk about a little bit after, uh, but probably in the Q&A session between, of mm -hmm. the differences between VRLI's Log Inside free edition and paid edition, because there is a paid edition. But anytime you have this, the cloud on AWS subscription, you get to 30 days of the, of the full version. And after you will switch to the, to the free tier. So in, the, in this free tier, you got these uh, three content packs that have been highlighted in red there. So you have the audit events for the VMware cloud on SDDC. We have the NS60 events and we have the general one, which is more covering the VRLI's log inside cloud as itself. So they are enabled. They are not, um, normally they are not enabled by default. So that's why you need to, to tick this uh, little button to make it green. And anytime there is a new version, the old one is not replaced by the new. So you need to know that it has to be um, uh, kept if you, if you have uh, personalized any of the content there. But this is just to, to let you know that. The, at the moment, the, the, the content pack that we are leveraging are the version 2.0 for the audit events and the version 5.0 for the NSXT events. So, um, so yeah, so be careful with that. Uh, let's, uh, let's dig a little bit more. So if you look at the audit events, what does it really mean for the VMware Cloud and SDDC? So the, uh, the content pack is uh, bringing a couple of dashboards. So we have, uh, I think, 11 uh, dashboards there. Uh, and there are uh, multiple ways to, to uh, multiple options to search the dashboards, uh, to make tags, to favorite the dashboards, or to add the dashboards to a list. Um, customer can also create and share con custom content in the dashboard navigation so that uh, you make the dashboard available for, uh, for everyone. Um, uh, we have the NS60 event, which is also uh, a more detailed um, view on what's going on in terms of creating a firewall rule. Uh, it could be a distributed firewall rule, it could be a gateway firewall rule. And we have also the top the destination and source, as well as the port that has been permitted or denied. And we have seven dashboards for this one. And uh, it now also includes the IDS IPS events like the, you know, the policy creation and the top signatures hits, which are very new because this was recently added into the VMware Cloud and AWS through the uh, advanced firewall add-on. The VMC overview dashboard, is, I would say, is the main one for uh, observing what's going on on the VMC deployment. Uh, it's very easy to consume. Uh, it helps us visualize the events and the trends in the VMC on AWS deployment. And it can be personalized uh, by the, the, the use of widgets, we call it. So each of the small screen uh, you see there is, is a widget. So if you want to customize it, um, obviously you need to, to copy it because some of the contents are read-only in the dashboard. So if you want to have your own uh, dashboard, you just copy that dashboard, make a copy, and then you, you change all of the settings there. 
Um, whenever you open the dashboard, you see some of the informations coming from, uh, from the data that have been already collected. And you can always customize as well the time range to make sure that this is showing information. Um, and uh, you can see there, for instance, there is no information coming in the virtual machine migrated events. Does not really mean it's a bad thing, but it's just uh, important to understand what each of the widgets are representing to make sure you're, that you are not misunderstanding the, them. We have this dashboard workbench. So this is the, the workbench is the, the, the tooling that you use to personalize your own dashboard. So as I said, you will clone one dashboard if you, you feel you want to to start from an existing one. And then what you're gonna be doing is uh, grabbing any of the widgets you see on the left from the right to the, from the left to the right, and you can adapt the display settings a little bit. You can also change uh, the type of, uh, you know, model uh, of reporting uh, or, or graphs there uh, to adapt to, to your own uh, situation and the, the one that you prefer. Um, so, so yeah, so for instance, there you can see there you can customize the color, you can customize the type of uh, the widget, could be a chart, could be an even stream, it could be an even trend or an even type. And each of the charts also have different options, several options to display the data. Once you have uh, enabled the dash, the, the content pack, you're also getting some alerts. They are, uh, not enabled by default. If you want to enable the alerts, you need to go to the alert definition, select uh, or filter the alerts that you want to enable, and you just uh, click uh, in the action button on the enable uh, options, and it's gonna be enabling all of the alerts that you want. So that's very easy to enable the alert, as you can see. Uh, there are, so those, those alerts are already uh, delivered by the content packs. So you don't need to, to customize them if you consider it's, it's okay, but you can always customize uh, the alert and um, you can change the query and you can uh, also um, you know, adapt the, the notification model that you want. It could be email or it could be anything else like Slack or webhook, as I said. Yeah, and this is just showing um, the triggered alerts. Uh, so there is a specific um, menu where you can uh, see the, the latest one and you can also uh, filter on those alerts. Could be, you, you could filter on the severity of the alerts, the type of alerts, and you can always adjust uh, the time frame. Anytime you go and see uh, this kind of, uh, uh, let's say, diagram, you can filter on the, the time frame and you can filter on any of the definition as well. This is where you can adapt and uh, you can uh, customize your own alerts. So customizing an alert uh, it means that uh, you probably uh, will um, set up uh, the condition to trigger the alerts. So this is this is very uh, useful. Um, let's say if you want uh, to send a, an, an alert from, uh, let's say, the storage consumption whenever you are uh, crossing uh, uh, some uh, some thresholds, then you can enable these alerts, and then you choose the the repository. Uh, uh, the notification could be by email, as I said, or it could be also a Slack uh, Slack notification. So the way the way you configure the notification is, is this uh, is this uh, this menu. Uh, you can also add a tag to um, to an alert uh, to to be able to. Um, to filter a little bit um, easier the, the the type of alerts. Yeah, and for several of my customers, this is one of the most important features that are yeah. used, okay? Because uh, in this way, uh, they, they can set, customize it and a specific plan to process, store, alert, notice and response in some cases with with automatic and orchestrated workflows and and audit their operation in a in a widely manner all these possibilities uh, give the chance to to certain kind of customer to be compliant with sector regulation and with specific certification so 
it's yeah. it's great one option through the web hooks as well which is uh, quite interesting is the the fact that we can also leverage pager duty i know pager duty is being used more yeah. and more by customers mm -hmm. so to, through the web hook web hook integration you can uh, you can use pager duty as a as a i would say notification uh, repository yeah the log processing rules so let's talk about the log management so that we have all those logs coming from all the sources then there are several options to uh, for the retention so you have uh, these default retentions of 30 days but uh, can be less time if needed so that you can uh, limit a little bit the consumption for some part of the of the logs and you can also uh, tag the logs uh, this helps also um, uh, if you want uh, to filter the logs uh, and you can also filter logs that allow you to drop certain messages uh, so that uh, again uh, when you drop some log messages um, it's always dropped before it is it is ingested so you are not charged for that specific messages so really for a customer who wants to limit his consumptions uh, let's say you don't want to filter to have the DNS UDP communication, I would say, on port 53, then you can filter all of those logs from uh, from the system and then you don't pay for that uh, amount of data. That could be very chatty, you know, so. <laughs> um, log forwarding is very interesting, as I said, so through the cloud proxy, you can redirect the logs or forward the logs back to on-premises or any uh, CM uh, on a SaaS model as well. So um, I, um, I remember a customer were asking me, how can I forward the logs from BMC on AWS uh, to my Splunk instance running on, uh, let's say AWS uh, as, a, as it was running it on an EC2 instances. So it's very easy. You just have to deploy the cloud proxy on your VMC on AWS. You configure this um, log forwarding uh, menu. Uh, destination, uh, you just uh, select on-premises, you select the cloud proxy, and then you select the endpoint as Splunk. Just have to uh, specify the uh, uh, HTTP endpoint IP addresses. And uh, if you go to the Splunk instance, it's gonna be uh, generating you a, a, an authorization token that's gonna be entering there. You can apply this uh, redirection to all the logs or some of the logs so that you don't send all the logs to your Splunk instance as well. Yes. And there is no charge for forwarding the logs to the to any uh, to any endpoint. Something also which is interesting. Uh, the log archiving. So anytime uh, you can forward the log to on-premises or to OCM, but you can also uh, uh, you can also ar archive the logs. This would require a S3 bucket. Uh, and uh, then the logs can be retained for longer, for longer time, like seven years. And you, need, you just need to have the right access to this S3 bucket. Uh, and then once you have archived the log in this S3 bucket, you can go in and, and view the, the archives from the log archival section and select uh, any of the logs that you want to recall. Yep. And this concludes this presentation. Uh, thank you very yep. much. Thanks I hope it lot. was valuable. Yes, and um, uh, we want to receive your feedback. So we have a little question here in order to rate the, the session. And please, uh, we encourage you to answer it and obviously to share with you sorry to share with us uh, other topics that will be great to 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 take in in note and, and have a specific session in the near future so if you have the opportunity please leave your feedback and after this uh, three question i think so um we can go ahead with the question and answer section yeah sure do do we do we have uh, some questions coming in yeah, I, uh, we have the session feedback in front. I think, please, uh, if someone have any kind of problem with with the question, I think that is showing in a in a screen different for for us. We can.
take this one. Okay. Yeah, we have another. So thank Chris for the session. I think that we point to the most cool features yeah. that we have with 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 this service because really this you know that this application could be deployed on prem but obviously we focus yeah, so, <laughs> in the SaaS yeah. solution yeah it's better, much more better to have it on SaaS and just to highlight that yeah maybe okay. we can move to the question slides to yeah. see if there we, are any questions okay we have we the have last couple, one of the questions yeah mm -hmm. And we can go ahead with the Q and A sections. Okay. Yeah, let's go to the Q and A sessions. Yeah. So. Yeah. This is one, open. One question we we have is what are the differences between virtualized log inside cloud and virtualized on premises? That's a good question. I think the virtualized log inside cloud would include the public public cloud support, for instance. Uh, and uh, we have also this log forwarding to the SaaS destination, as I told, and uh, external uh, arch log archiving to the S3 bucket, which so which are very useful when you are, you know, in a multi-cloud environment. Um, and uh, obviously, a virtualized log inside cloud is a SaaS solution, SaaS offering, which has probably a higher scalability than any other solutions on-prem. So that would be the the most valuable differences I see. Um, uh, what's what, maybe something also we, we, we may highlight it what's the differences in terms of the versions we have you know these three versions um, and we, we have this um, this paid version so the VMC core package includes the monitoring of as I said of the audit logs for the for the for the compliance um, purpose with detailed insights uh, of uh, of the in, in, into the activities for each of the the, the VMC SDDCs, uh, but um, the, the the free version does not include, um, for instance, the firewall logging, and it has a shorter retention period of seven days in, in ter, instead of uh, thirty days, and um, we don't support. Uh, Non uh, BMC on AWS log sources with the, I mean we support, but it's limited to one gig a day. So it's probably good. The free version is probably okay for a small environment for testing purpose, but we really recommend to 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 go to the to the paid version. Yeah, and which question that could be asked, Chris? Uh, what are region are currently supported with this service? Uh, so we we, we support uh, not only US. We we have added additional region support like Europe, Frankfurt, uh, and uh, Canada, and as well as uh, Sydney, uh, Australia. Okay. So... Okay. So I think we we need to to finish the sessions if we don't have any yeah. other questions uh, we can uh, we can uh, go to the to the resource slides just to, yeah. to give you don't, a don't be shy if you have any kind of question please you have any, the q a section any additional resources so we have the cloud tech zone i really recommend and uh, the people and the folks to go to this to this zone, which 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 shares a lot of really really good contents. I mean, yep. the, the the team is really spending a lot of time delivering this this contents, and they are really really good. Yeah, uh, we have the cloud on AWS home page, and we are the cloud customer success community. And oh, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if you want to reach out to us, uh, yep. I'm Christophe Lombard. Uh, I have a, a link LinkedIn account as well, and uh, my blog, which is uh, vminded.com, for anyone who, who wants to to have a look at it. I'm really uh, happy if you can give me some comments as well. And uh, Pedro, uh, I'm here, and if you can you can read me whatever you want. You can follow me on Twitter and drop me a message if you want. You can search me in LinkedIn and. We are here in order to address any kind of depths of concern, not only regarding this, this service. Well, as you know, we are, both of us, we are cloud solution architect. Uh, our main focus is BNC on AWS, but I'm here to, to help you in any Absolutely. Any 
Okay. Thank you, Pedro. Thank you, everyone. Thank and, you, Chris. Uh, see you next time for the next uh, tips and tricks session. Bye, everyone. Bye, bye. See you. See you. Thank you.